What's up guys? GG Warriors back in town. I hope you guys had a really good weekend. You enjoyed your Saturday, Sunday, Friday on the bikes with the families. God knows who. I did. Not on a bike. <laughs> I wish. Oh, look at this weather. I love Florida, man. I used to live in Chicago and it would not look like this at this time. Alright, so I decided to take a ride here today with you guys and uh, talk about warrior specific stuff for my warrior brothers, especially the new ones that I just, that just got a warrior, just bought the dream bike. and <clears throat> talk about performance parts that's what we're gonna cover today we're gonna start with the simple stuff and then move our, our way back up into the the real shit so <clears> I <throat> hope you guys can hear me all right so performance parts I remember when I got my bike it was completely stuck I did not know anything about the warrior and of course after I don't know maybe a few months not even I already wanted more because I'm obsessed I'm a freak I want more I want to be the fastest the best sounding the best looking everything <laughs> uh, joking but um so I was doing research I was seeing uh, what kind of performance parts out there obviously you know you, the basic stuff like for beginners they just get into this it's usually uh, the the entry-level things like exhausts you know uh, back V back I'll tell you exactly what that means what options are out there ECU flashes uh, pulleys clutches all that shit you know, usually uh, when you get your bike, uh, you start off, you know, with the exhaust. You can get a two-in-one exhaust or a two-in-two. The difference is basically uh, a two-in-one is more performance. I'm gonna make it very easy for everybody to understand. I'm not gonna go into, you know, mechanics language here. I'll make it very simple. A uh, two-in-one is basically performance oriented exhaust it will give you more power or performance in both torque and horsepower while the two and two is more for sound um, looks you know not everybody is a fan of a two and one exhaust look and uh, the best performing two and one exhaust out there are Vincent Heinz Pro Pipe Speedstar Generation 2 exhaust Monster Pro Pipe two-in-one from Pacific Coast Star uh, the Roadster two-in-one exhaust exhaust from uh, Pacific Coast let's see that I forgot something I think there was there was something else out there if I forgot I apologize if not uh, you know these these basically cover the best performing exhaust out there I think from what I heard the speed started it's basically a discontinued exhaust very hard to get very hard to find is the is the exhaust made by Speedstar which is um, th which is like basically like Screaming Eagle for Harley Davidson you know they they made back then all of our performance parts like cams and stuff uh, the exhaust as well ECU flashes for our bike specifically and all that and all that shit was covered under warranty back then but Speedstar is exhaust, I mean Speedstar is discontinued and these parts are very hard to find but supposedly it was uh, made by Yamaha and the best performing pipe but God knows, I don't know <clears throat> Benson 9's Pro Pipe, I mean they're all up there they're all up there and then 2-2 two two exhaust I mean my personal opinion, I'm not speaking for everybody here but my own personal opinion is that the big shots, the Vance 9's big shots, 2-1-2 two, two, 
are the best sounding, the loudest and the best performing 2 and 2 exhaust that you can get after the 2 and 2 1s. Then you got uh, things like, you know, rips, Samsung rip sauce, Bob Juggers, all these short 2 and 2 exhausts, they're super loud, man. They sound great, but they are not as good as uh, in performance as the other ones. Um, I can give you an example. When I got my bike, it was completely stuck, and I put two and two exhausts in there. I bought a Samsung Slasher exhaust, which are a two and two exhaust. And I knew, you know, you have to dine your bike after that, rejet it because fuel air mixture is changed. So I did exactly that with that, and that was without a uh, bag, a big air kit, and. Uh, when I put it on the dyno, my numbers are actually stayed the same. I didn't, uh, I did not gain any performance. My, uh, my to the rear wheel horsepower was like 72, and my torque numbers were like uh, 101, something like this, and. Um, yeah, that, that was my worst part, so I didn't really gain anything. Maybe I did, maybe not, I didn't, I don't know. But then I moved over to the bags, the big air kits. So there's three types. The cheapest one and the less, least uh, performing one from all these is the Barons. Barons are uh, big air kit. Second on the list is, oh actually, I, I mean, the first place that share the first place are basically um, Church Keys and Patrick's. Church Keys v back that stands for Velocity Bicker Kit. And then you got the uh, Patrick Racing Back, which stands for Patrick uh, Racing Big Air Kit. It's supposed to be, I think it should, they should change the name also to v back backup because the Patrick Racing does come with Velocity tubes. Or some uh, black metallic tubes that, you know, attached uh, to the throttle bodies so they do have velocity stacks um, church keys are longer they got from what i remember i don't know if it's 90 degrees or not but um you know they are they're rounded and uh, they are both very very similar performing uh, church keys will give you a little bit more of torque uh, Patrick Racing will give you a little bit more horsepower, but the, the differences are so minimal, it doesn't really matter which one you go. I decided to go with the Patrick Racing because I wanted to have everything, you know, by Patrick Racing, my whole setup. And um, and that's basically it. I mean, the price for the Patrick Racing and the Church Keys are around the same. I think it's like 250 bucks. And uh, 260 or 270 for the Patrick Racing back. And I think the Barons is like what 180 now or something like this, you know. And then of course, once you have these two, your air fuel mixture is completely changed. That's when you gotta step in with a uh, Power Commander three or Power Commander five, uh, which allows you to, you know, visit a dyno shop. They can dyno it. They can uh, adjust the fuel air mixture correctly so your bike doesn't run too lean or too rich you know you get the most uh, fuel economy out of it and of course the best power because my opinion is if you spend all that money on performance parts you don't want to download a generic map I always not advise these type of actions because you know, everybody lives in different areas, everybody lives in different sea levels, temperatures and all that other crap that changes numbers and you want to get your bike dialed in specifically for your area, your location where you ride at with your parts and you want to squeeze every single penny out of these performance parts. So do me a favor, don't like download a generic map just as a band-aid and then go get yourself a real spend the fucking 200 250 350 whatever it is on on a real dyno tune okay you can also uh buy one of those auto tuners like the cobra or the, there is other ones out there 
I've never installed one. I've never researched anything about auto tuners. I'm not a big fan of these. But that it's an option too. That would save you the the hassle to go to a dyno center and dyno your bike every time you get performance parts. I, me personally, from the research I made, they do not squeeze out all fucking uh, every single little bit of horsepower and torque out of your performance parts. But they will make your bum bike run safe, run at the right air fuel mixture and you should be good to go um, after that you can look into you know like a stage two i mean i think the exhaust the back the power commander that covers basically stage one um, you know stage two i guess would be fucking um, high compression pistons which you can get by uh, right now you can only get them for Patrick Racing. Patrick Racing has high compression pistons. I think they run around 350. Those are you can uh, buy them, and these are drop-in pistons. So you know you just put them in, and you're done. <clears throat> um, once you get your pistons, I recommend working on your or upgrading on your clutch. You know. Actually, you can go either route. You can either go with Ivan's ECU flash, which is a great option. Uh, I will get into this in a little bit. Um, you know, clutch upgrade, Barnet SR2 spring conversion. So it upgrades your stock clutch to a spring conversion and runs around $170. And the Barnet SR2 spring conversion uh, comes with uh, gold springs um, and the more power you get the better springs you can get you know I mean it's recommended because I mean if you if you put in fucking a cam kit in there and pistons and a god knows big book kit or something like this then uh, you know your, your clutch will start slipping um, in top end or so so you know what I would recommend is every uh, when you get a Barnet SR2 spring conversion, get the green springs. I also the middle springs. There is gold springs, green springs, and red springs. Red springs are for you know highest performing warriors out there. You know the bikes that reach over 100 horsepower, and um, <clears throat> the green springs would get you covered until then. You know, I mean, if you if you if you have a two-in-one exhaust pistons back you should be around somewhere in the mid 80s low 90s in horsepower and you know I would recommend to go get the green springs for like $20 or so in order to prevent clutch slipping you know you want to make sure you get all the power into the rear wheel and nothing slips so you get uh, nap snapping <laughs> performance <laughs> basically I mean I feel it every time like if I hit the fucking throttle, whoo, you know, I should fucking uh, ride around with like a neck bracelet or so just to prevent the fucking my head from cracking and falling off. <laughs> Anyways, um, uh, let's let's go to Ivan's performance. Ivan's performance is U flash. It's uh, you know people buy it mainly because it removes all the limiters that are out uh, that that come with the bike you know um, everything that decreases performance on the bike is removed engine braking is removed so see I have barely any engine braking I can let go and my bike rolls I remember when I didn't have the uh, the uh, Ivan's ECU flash I'll let go of the throttle and it would be like I mean this thing will fucking scream no it's not that case um, it will also raise your left rev limiter to 58.50 and price wise I think it's $350 um, with unlimited upgrades if, or if there is any upgrades out there you know every time Ivan uh, <clears throat> improves something you can send your ECU flash and he will uh, upgrade it for free for you um, also what it does there is a uh, how do you call that thing 
there is a, basically a limiter that uh, limits your bike's top speed to 125 with the uh, Ivan CCU flash you know you're basically running like 140 miles an hour with the right uh, with the right setup I don't know if you can reach 140 on the warrior with a stock setup but once you put pipes and all that shit in you know you can reach it don't do this I don't recommend it you know don't be a freak don't be a GD warrior so don't do this at home all right stay at like 45 60 miles an hour and you'll be fine <laughs> said no one ever anyways <clears throat> let's go into the big shit all right expensive stuff Patrick racing cam kit oh my god I mean I tell you guys a story um, you know I, I told you guys that I switched to two and two exhaust and you know I was not happy so I saved up some money and I bought myself a Patrick racing cam kit comes with the Patrick racing adjustable push routes push routes the cams uh, the ceramic lifters and oh my fucking god what the fuck happened to my bike I mean once they installed this st stuff it, it was a complete different bike I mean I gained oh shit what the fuck I hope whew. anyways um, le let me tell you something I remember the horsepower number that I give you gave you guys it was like 72 on the dyno after the installation of the Patrick Racing cam kit and the pistons I did it all together without the AE, uh, Ivan CCU flash I went to the fucking dyno shop I come back I'm like what are my numbers and he's like 110 horsepower to the rear wheel and 121 pounds of torque I mean this is a fucking crazy improvement oh by the way I forgot to mention I also installed a 31 front pulley um, 31 front pulley doesn't directly increase the performance of your bike you won't gain horsepower even though it feels like it but it changes the gear ratio so basically uh, you gotta shift uh, more frequently faster you, you're gonna get uh, 0 to 60 faster than with, with a stock pulley um, lots of people ask you know how is the rideability on the 31 front pulley like uh, like like cruising you know on a highway and it's great I can't compare I can't um, say anything about it because when I ride you know I'm in fifth gear I'm going 80 miles an hour or so and I'm fucking fine you know or fourth gear doesn't matter I mean I had 115 I think in fourth gear or I can cruise on 80 miles an hour in fifth so that it doesn't really fucking affect me in any way um, anyways let's go back to camp kit camp kit installed but it was a performance uh, sorry <laughs> did I just burp it was a uh, expensive thing to do I think the camp kit I bought it used from a guy on the forum he sold it to me for from what I remember for nine hundred dollars but the camp kit on at Patrick Racing used to run for like I think twelve hundred to thirteen hundred bucks and uh, yeah it's it's a very costly toy that you can buy but it's worth it you know you're gonna you will be over 100 horsepower I'm um, Speedstar made a Speedstar stage 4 kit which basically was the cams you know um, I think pistons and all that other crap 2 in 1 Speedstar exhaust blah 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 all that stuff that I just covered which made it a stage 4 but they are discontinued unfortunately um, you can probably get used Speedstar cams somewhere on eBay but these are so rare good luck finding these um, what else <clears throat> yeah and then next step will be either ported polished heads you know you can port and polish your heads um, increases airflow increases performance and then you can upgrade to 110 or 108 cubic inch big board kit you know there is no replacement for displacement and this will give you I mean you will be in the 120s in horsepower 130 to 140 pounds of torque if you if you dial it in right and get all the right parts and all that stuff so um, but it's also costly I mean only the cam kit okay with the uh, only the cam kit with 
with labor included cost me around three thousand dollars to do this okay if you go with the uh, big board kit which is also uh, the 110 is like what 1600 bucks 1400 bucks 15 let's say it's 1500 dollars and you don't know how to do the work yourself oh my god you go you are going to you spend another three grand basically on uh, on just on labor if you are lucky you know so it can be more than that but once you have uh, once you have all these parts I mean there is nothing else out there in cruiser wise that can like you know keep up with you un un unless it's a fucking six cylinder engine or so I mean you will kill everything on the road or most of it I'm not saying all of them but fucking 95% for sure I guess that covers everything <laughs>